Final Cut Express allows you to bring in your media a number of different ways. You can import them, you can do uh, login transfer, and you can also capture. Each one is for doing it a different way for different kinds of media depending upon where they're coming from. For example, the import. The import is primarily for content that is in the form of like photographs, still images. It could also be for audio and it can also be for videos that cannot be brought in the other two ways. For example, you may have a digital video camera that saves to a hard drive or flash and it is non-AVCHD compatible. These movies would not be able to be brought in through the, the login transfer or capture method, so you'd have to bring them in through the import. I'm just going to go ahead and import in a photograph. So I've selected my photograph and picked choose. I could have selected multiple photographs. And you can then see that it has brought it into the Final Cut browser. So for some of the media, you can bring it in through the import. For others, you'll be able to use log and transfer. Log and transfer are for those video cameras that are flash or hard drive based and they must be AVCHD compatible. With that type of camera, you would put it into the playback mode. You would connect it via a USB cable. And then when you go into the log and transfer, it will show you all of the clips that are on that camera. So you can see right now I have only three video clips recorded. I can then, if I want a particular clip, I can simply select it. It'll show it in this preview window. And let's say in the case of this clip, I want the entire clip. I can name it whatever I want, provide any additional information, and then simply add add clip to queue. While um, working, it will then transfer the data for that clip to my project, and you'll then see that clip in the browser. Let's say I want this clip, but not the entire clip. Once again, I could name it. I can go to a particular part and set an endpoint. I can go to a particular part and set an endpoint. That's this button here. Go to another part and say that's my ending point. So I would set a now point. So now instead of taking the entire clip, I'll only be taking this portion of it. I would name it, add clip to queue. It'll then start transferring that file. It gives me the endpoint, the outpoint. It gives me the duration. And you can see that's going to go through and download that. Now on some computers, it may be a little slow while you're working so if you want you can pause that you can then go to a, another clip pick whatever you want let's say I'm going to add that entire clip to the queue and then when I'm ready I can simply restart the transfer so it'll continue from where it left off now this clips rather long it's 51 minutes so I'm not going to actually wait for that one to download it's transfer so I'm going to go ahead and select it and then hit delete on the keyboard to remove it so you repeat that process for all the clips or portions of the clips that you want. Selecting the clip, selecting the in and the out points, giving it the information, and then clicking on the add clip to queue. All right, so it's all done transferring my file. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window. And you can see the two clips that I have brought into Final Cut using the log and transfer. Now let's say that we have a camera that is tape based and it is digital. So it uses a mini DV, but it uses a firewire cable for transferring the data. Here I would want to use the capture setting or selection. So it'll go ahead, my camera is already on. It's in the VCR playback mode. It's connected via the firewire and it was able to establish communication with the camera. So that's indicated by the BTR OK. Now with FireWire, I'm not only able to transfer the data, but I'm also able to control the device. So I can click on play, and it'll actually start the tape to play back in the camera. So you can see the video. I can fast forward if I want by dragging my slider. And I can control the speed of that by positioning my slider differently. It is showing me the current time code of that particular frame. I can rewind, I can do any number of things here with the clip, and I'm controlling all that from the computer, not the camera. So let's say that I'm playing this, watching, watching, and watching, and then I decide, okay, right there is the beginning of the clip I want to capture. I would simply click on the Now button, and it'll start capturing my video. 
and I would simply let it go through until it got to the end of my clip portion that I want and as it says down here simply press escape to end the capture that clip is then going to be placed into my project window. Remember that we can create bins and we can organize these however is best for a particular project. Now also in this capture window there are some um, pieces of information that we can put in. We can put in the reel so if we want to better identify where this is coming from we can. We can also name it whatever we want. So we maybe call this one XYZ123 and you'll see that that is then reflected in the name and I can go ahead and capture it again uh, go get a different clip. Now the method using the now button works fine, it's pretty easy but it also requires me to be there to tell it when to start capturing and for me to be there to tell it when to stop capturing. And in many cases that works fine but if I've kept a good shot lock and I have a good record of time code for the beginning and ending of a clip, I could enter that in directly. So I could come down here to my endpoint, and let's say we put in 0120. So that would be for, well, let's actually change that, let's do something a little bigger than that, because you need at least five seconds of space in front of the clip and that would only be one second so that's not going to be enough. So let's go to 0810. So that'd be eight seconds and ten frames. And let's say that I want my ending point to be at 15 seconds and zero frames. So I've set an in point and an out point. And I can now just click on the clip button. And what it'll do is take over the camera. It will rewind it back prior to the starting point. That's why you have to have at least five seconds because it needs to go before the starting frame. And so now it's in the process of rewinding. And so it was at about a minute and a half. So now it has to rewind back almost to the very beginning of the tape. There it is. It's at the very beginning of the tape and it's getting ready to play now it's playing forward and when it gets to that exact frame there it is it's going to start recording and when it gets to that exact out point it'll stop capturing all automatically i'm not clicking on anything and there we go it has now captured that clip here's xyz123 exactly at this starting point and this ending point that i had previously specified Right, so that's another one. Now one important no note about capturing, these clips are links to the actual files. These are being placed based on where you have your system settings set for. So in video capture and audio capture, wherever this location is, that's where these clips are going. The ones that I did log and transfer and capture for. The import, where, whatever folder that was in, that's where it's linked to. Here's that folder that was specified in my system setting. And you can see then that here are my two from log and transfer, and here are the two that were done using the capture. Those are all in my folder that was set for my capture, my video and audio capture. So make sure that you keep those organized. All right, that's how you bring in media into Final Cut Express.